Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather interestingly refers to Jesus as his word in the Quran. O Mary, behold, God gives you good news of a word from him who shall become known as the Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary. Christians see this turn of phrase and celebrate. They assume it's confirmation of Jesus' divinity because John introduces Jesus as both the Word and as God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus isn't only the living Word of God in Christianity, he is both fully God and fully man, who saves your soul if you believe in him. In other words, the Word equals God. So is the Muslim Qur'an confirming Jesus' divinity by referring to him as the Word? No. The Qur'an unequivocally strips Jesus of divinity and refers to him as a prophet, albeit a very important one. The Messiah, son of Mary, was no other than a messenger. Messengers before him had indeed passed away. So why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use the biblical terminology with its divine connotations? This is the Qur'an engaging in intertextual quoting, as it often will with other disputed theological ideas. As a control, Muhaymin, over previous scriptures, the Qur'an first draws our attention to a concept it considers corrupted, i.e. the word. For example, in the Old Testament revealed before the four Gospels, the Word of God, as in Islam, is originally personified as an instrument for the execution of God's will, as per, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. He sent his word and healed them. Lamed. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. As you can see, there's nothing about the word being a separate person let alone being Jesus, as developed later in Christianity, where Christ, the Word, is no longer a personification of God's revelation, but God's revelation of himself in the flesh. Islam and Judaism consider this a blasphemous corruption of scripture by quoting the biblical phrase in the Qur'an, i.e. the Word. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first draws our attention to the concept. He connects the Qur'an to the older scriptures. And finally, he provides us with what it considers its true definition as a corrective to the misguidance. So here is the correct definition of the word provided in the Qur'an by Allah Azza wa Jal. Indeed, the likeness of Jesus to God as the likeness of Adam. He created him from dust, then said to him, be, and he was. So no, Jesus is definitely not God. And he's Allah's word only in so far as he is created by Allah's command. But why call Isa alayhi salam Allah's word exclusively if Allah created many things in this way? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives Isa this title because for over 2,000 years and today over 2 billion Christians live and breathe the misguided theology. And the word was God. In order to negate this historic lie, and so humanity isn't left in any doubt about his diminished status as someone created by the command of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assigns the word to Jesus as a special title, but this time with the correct definition. What better way to designate Jesus as not a creator and divine life giver than to call him by the creative instruction of Allah, the word? This will obviously infuriate Christians. To them, Jesus is far above a created entity. He's the co-eternal creator who's one with the Godhead. So let's clarify some loose ends. The word of God is a legitimate idea in both Judaism and Islam. It means the creative command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus it is. God created what he wills when he decrees a matter, he only says to it, be, and it is. As a later revelation, the Qur'an confirms this. So the idea of the word isn't a Christian innovation. Therefore, the Qur'an isn't actually quoting a Christian concept when calling Jesus his word. Rather, Allah is quoting himself from an earlier revelation, the Old Testament. The Christians corrupted 
this concept in the New Testament, wrongly assigning it to Jesus and making it a deity in its own right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is simply taking it back to its original meaning. So let's quickly recap and summarize the amazing process Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to clarify the truth to humanity. SubhanAllah. Allah names and highlights a legitimate term, i.e. the word, in the Qur'an. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of God and his word, which he conveyed unto Mary. He then addresses the misguidance. The Messiah, son of Mary, was no other than a messenger. Messengers before him had indeed passed away. And then finally, he gives us the correct interpretation. It is not for Allah to beget offspring. Glory to him. When he decrees something, he simply says to it, Be, and it is. Subhanallah, does a refutation get any more elegant than that? So yes, Christians ought to not get carried away seeing Jesus referred as Allah's word in the Qur'an, or indeed the Bible. Although Allah is echoing an earlier idea, he's ultimately drawing our attention to not his divinity, but his non-divinity. It's a devastating demotion that won't please a Christian. So no, Jesus is not a god. A mighty prophet, yes, but not a god. The Messiah, son of Mary, was no other than a messenger. And thankfully so. Can you imagine a baby god who is at the mercy of a human mother? Without milk, this god would have died. A god who answers the call of nature and feels hunger and fatigue like you and I. Can you imagine a god who says he doesn't know the hour? Can you imagine a God who is outwitted by the Jewish Sanhedrin? Can you imagine a God who hangs helpless on a cross, is beaten to death by Roman soldiers? I can, when I read about Greek and Roman gods with similar colourful human lives. And when you study these pagan myths, you realise the attributes of the Christian Jesus were virtually lifted off of the Hellenic legends extant at the time. Alhamdulillah for Islam.